Well, joining us now, co-founder and CEO of the group All In Together, Lauren Leader. Also with us, University of California Davis Law Professor Mary Ziegler. She's also the author of Dollars for Life, the anti-abortion movement and the fall of the Republican establishment. It's really good to have you both. Um, Lauren, I'll start with you. Just your reaction to the news that broke uh, early Friday morning. Well, I think like a lot of Americans, uh, there's a sort of shock and grief. It is very painful, even though we knew this was coming, uh, to see just how far the court was willing to go to overturn a 50-year precedent. And as we talked about when the opinion was leaked, it's really the first time, certainly in my lifetime, that we've seen a revocation of individual rights. And of course, the irony of it coming on the heels of this extraordinarily broad interpretation of individual rights when it comes to gun rights. And so, you know, the sort of hypocrisy of it is I've talked to women all over the country this weekend. There is a lot of disbelief, but also this sort of overwhelming sense of what now and how to regroup. And I think uh, on the left, this is going to be, without a question, an enormously galvanizing issue. I think Joe is right about the, for sure, about independent women. And, you know, I believe that over the long term, even among those who are pro-life, um, as the impact of this ruling begins to affect things like uh, IVF and potentially, ultimately, access to birth control, you know, this is, there are many bridges that will be too far, even for those who uh, may take a moral position on abortion and on life. And, and that is going to spell, I think, ultimately big trouble um, for the Republican Party in electoral politics. And, and Professor Ziegler, um... This isn't the end of where conservatives want to go on this issue. Hmm. Uh, I say conservatives, I, I'm sorry, uh, radicals want to go on this issue. This is just the beginning. I mean, what's next? Well, we've already been told what's next. A federal ban of abortion uh, being passed through Congress. What's next? Justice Thomas has told us what's next. They're going after contraceptives next. They're going after marriage equality next. They're going after even what adults, consenting adults do in the privacy of their own bedrooms next. Explain where this goes from here. Well, the first thing to remember is that for the anti-abortion movement, personhood, right, the idea of a nationwide ban has always been the goal. Roe v. Wade was just sort of a stop on the road. And so we've seen um, Republicans in Congress say they're going to pass a ban at six weeks. It's fair to say that's not going to satisfy people in the anti-abortion movement either. They want a ban in blue states, right? They would probably ideally like the same conservative Supreme Court to come back and say that abortion itself is unconstitutional, right, to expand the rights um, of fetuses or unborn children in the womb um, at the expense of pregnant people in blue states. Um, and of course, as Clarence Thomas points out, right, the logic of the court's opinion, right, that our rights are limited by what um, the people in office who wrote the 14th Amendment in the 19th century thought, which of course was only a pretty select group of white men, um, if those are the only rights, right, to same-sex marriage, that we would have a right to any kind of intimacy that we would have a right to interracial marriage, that we would have a right to birth control, because no one thought we had any of those rights in the 19th century. So it, the only thing really standing in the way of that happening um, is if the Supreme Court is making policy decisions. And we know uh, that disclaimers like the one Brett Kavanaugh gave in his concurring opinion or Samuel Alito in his majority opinion often have an expiration date, right? The Supreme Court usually doesn't immediately act against those guarantees, but we know historically that they've done it plenty of times. And so if we're looking five, 10 years down the road, I think we have to worry about all of those rights. Lauren, uh, Reverend Al, Lauren. You, you've been uh, looking at the fact that in some areas and in, in uh, some red states, that a lot of the local state legislators, Republican, were not even challenged. Do you think this decision and the threat of it going further, contraceptions, or LGBTQ rights, whatever, will now make some Democrats uh, go after some of these state seats and have a rationale to even win some uh, where they were unchallenged in the past. Yeah, and we've talked about this on the show before that the Democratic Party has largely not focused on state races, has not had the kind of long-term strategy that Republicans had to pack state legislatures even beyond what it represents the majority or the, the representation across political party lines in those states. And, you know, in the 2022 session of the Florida legislature, 
legislature was seated with over a quarter of the seats having faced zero, zero Democratic candidates fielded against them. The Texas state legislature in 2020 had, you know, dozens of seats that no one ran against. So, look, I think this has to be a very serious wake up call. The, re the Republican agenda in this has always been to send issue after issue after issue back to the states. That's kind of the core of this federalist, you know, sort of federalist view that all things must be decided by the individual states and not at the federal level. Well, if that's the if that's the world we're now playing in, re Democrats are going to have to step up and be seriously ready to play in those states. We got to fund candidates in local offices. Right now, I was talking with a group of women last night. All they want to do is find who the state ledge candidates are running around the country that are pro-choice, that are running against pro-life candidates. There's no one place to get that information. No one's tracking it. So it's time for a serious realignment um, across the party politics. We got to go after those seats if, if we want to keep progressive agenda from gay marriage to birth control to everything else. It's going to require a long term commitment to state legislatures that hasn't been there. <sighs> yep. CEO of All In Together and activist Lauren Leader. Thank you very much. And University of California Davis law professor Mary Ziegler. Thank you as well. And up next.